paperwork behind the scenes. Uh, nothing gets done. Trades can't be made. Contracts can't be signed. And it's George McPhee that does it. There's Jack McElhargy, former Canuck. Now coaches Vancouver's team in Hamilton in the American Hockey League that is no longer there. He was a great tough guy with Vancouver Canucks back in the 80s. That cheer going up for Canuck trainer Larry Ashley. And what a story that is, Kevin. Uh, right now, Larry is suffering from cancer, undergoing chemotherapy treatment. And our prayers and best wishes go with Larry Ashley for a speedy recovery. I've got to think today is going to help the healing. Just introduced Dave Shima. He's the masseuse for the Vancouver Canucks. Tell me he's not appreciated by a player after a long playoff series. <laughs> I'm surprised they're not introducing the hyperbaric chamber this year. As, they should. Uh, I thought they'd uh, wheel that thing out, give it its own car, because it really did play an important part. What a picture. What a curtain call. Still to come on this Fan Appreciation Day, we will next be hearing from the uh, Premier of British Columbia, Mike Harcourt. As well, then we'll be hearing from uh, Arthur Griffiths, and uh, then Pat Quinn, and then each of the players is going to be speaking uh, in their turn. Each of them having uh, about a minute to speak. And uh, right now, let's go down back to the floor where Gloria Makarenko is standing by with, uh, again, part of this incredible crowd. Gloria. Thanks very much, Kevin. Well, you know, we were talking about it being a long, hard series, not just for the players, but for their families as well. I'm here with Kirk McLean's wife, Leslie McLean. Leslie, some of your feelings today leading up to this day. It's just, it's been a long season, and uh, the city has supported us through the whole year, and it's amazing. This is just incredible. It begs the question, what would have happened in the case of a win? I don't know. I think that, you know, they're just so proud as it is. It probably, it probably, they're just as happy today, you know, as if we had a one. We really, we did our best, so. Now, you must be absolutely exhausted after the series as well. What are some of the plans for the summer to wind down? Well, we're going to go back to Toronto and uh, spend some time with our families and just relax. Well deserved. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Back to Barry McDonald now. Barry? And uh, Barry McDonald is just cruising down the sidelines in this crowd he's uh, he's a little bit lost right now we'll get down to Barry in just a moment's time you know I was talking to the Premier Steve uh, just prior to uh, coming here and uh, the, the province has paid seventy five thousand dollars to get the dome and he said that uh, we had booked this facility win lose or draw the people of British Columbia simply needed to have an opportunity to say thank you and I can't think of a better place in which to say thank you of course uh, a couple of years down the road, we may be doing this in the Canucks' new home, which is uh, just uh, a few hundred yards from BC Place Stadium. But uh, this building has seen some memorable moments. This certainly has to be one of them. I can remember some great football games in here, Western Conference Finals, Grey Cups, North American Soccer League games. But this uh, certainly ranks right up there. This would be in my top five. Of course, that new facility opening for the fall of 1995 uh, season. Could it be? We will see the Stanley Cup played in that inaugural season. Well, we came within one goal of uh, toasting the Vancouver Canucks as Stanley Cup champions in 93-94. Yeah, who knows what 95-96 might hold. And there's a man who could play a big part in engineering a possible uh, Canucks Stanley Cup victory. The president, the general manager, and now coach, but he may be giving up that position, as we mentioned earlier. Well, he certainly has passed on a very effective team now here's Mike Harcourt getting a mixed reaction that's unfortunate Thank you very much, Tom. but predictable Listen, fans, we're not here to boo politicians we're here to cheer the Canucks the greatest team in the world that's what we're here to do and I'm here to say on all of our behalves that we believe we believe right down to the last 1.6 seconds we were going to tie it up and win in overtime, didn't we? What we associated with the Canucks have done is make us proud and the people around the world to be proud of the Vancouver Canucks. And we're here.
simply to say, we believe and thank you, we're proud of you. And I want, I want the team to know that the real fans, the real British Columbians, the real Vancouver hockey fans are here, orderly, celebrating. fans and you are the fans that deserve this magnificent hockey team. Let's hear it for them. Thank you. I talked to a genuine hockey fan, Steve. As he's himself is a bit of a basketball player, but uh, I know he was short. <laughs> a very clever politician. Let's go down to the stage now and uh, Tom Larshide who's going to introduce a very special guest. Emily Griffiths, the wife of the late Frank Griffiths. Emily, your ongoing support is much appreciated. And like you, we know Frank would be very proud to be here today. Mixed emotions, I'm sure, for Emily Griffiths. Is watching. Without your family, this memorable day in Vancouver would never have been possible. And we owe you a great deal of thanks for that. Please join me in recognizing a great lady, Mrs. Emily Griffiths. Arthur Griffiths saying, Steve, that the family really hasn't had an opportunity to grieve the loss of their husband and father because the playoffs have just consumed them emotionally. This has got to be, a, as you say, a moment of very mixed emotions. The children of uh, Stan Smeal and Jeff Portnell presenting bouquets to Emily Griffiths. Aren't they cute? And as well to Joanne Griffiths and uh, Sandra Quinn. Uh. <laughs> Mrs. Griffiths. Mrs. Griffiths, could you please come forward to the microphone, please? And at this time, I would like to call on His Worship, the Mayor of Vancouver, Philip Owen, to come forward and make a special presentation. Emily Griffiths mayor? indicating that she doesn't really want to speak, but the Mayor will. He's got a surprise. Vancouver City Council, many of council members are here today, held a special meeting two weeks ago, took a vote and had a unanimous vote. The vote was to rename a street in the city of Vancouver, which is the street right beside this BC Place Stadium that runs also next to the new hockey arena. And it's my pleasure to announce that that street will be permanently named in memory of Mr. Frank Griffiths, Sr. It will be known as Griffiths Way. Well, I know there was some discussion, Kevin, that perhaps the new building would be known as Griffith Place, but that's not going to be. It'll be GM Place, but Mr. Griffith will be pleased, I'm sure, that the street running next to the building in which the Canucks will be housed in future years will bear his name. I think that's a very nice gesture on the part of uh, Vancouver City Council. And very appropriate. It was the vision of Frank Griffiths, uh, not to mention his business acumen, that has made this possible.